That's why you don't keep the acetone rag on the welding table. Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, aluminium stick welding. In a lot of circles, these are all myths. But today, I can prove one of them not a myth. So upon first discovery that you can actually stick weld aluminium against all my previous beliefs, I promptly ordered a pack of 10. They arrived and they sat there and did nothing for the longest of time. But now I've got all the steel out, ready to go, fresh off doing the aluminium brazing video part two. So while it's all here, we'll give these sticks a go. If you're here looking for a pro to teach you how to use them, you're in the wrong place. You gotta go look elsewhere. But if you wanna watch me have a go for the first time ever and watch me learn a little bit of things along the way, you're in the right place. So stay tuned, have fun, and if you like it, subscribe. So for my first test, this is my setup. I've got a couple plates here. They're actually on one big thick plate, not straight to my bench. I've got some inconsistencies with my bench because it's only made out of thin plate steel in the first place. This is thicker, straighter, and I'm able to get the clamps where I need them to hold this nice, thick and straight. I have cleaned up and prepped these. I ran the flat disc over them, hand sanded them, and then I used uh, chemical cleaning. So hopefully that should all be good. I've only got 10 rods. Normally when you're having a go at this sort of stuff, like if, it's, if I'm just about to weld some trays and you know, one mil thick tray or something like that, I'll burn a few rods, get in the groove and go. But if I burn a few of these, I'm halfway done and can't do any more testing. So to start off with, first test, I'm just gonna try and do a quick tack there, quick tack here. I've got the amp set around around 50 amps, which might be a little bit low, but I don't know. I don't know with this, never done it before, so I'm gonna start low and see how I go. So I'm gonna need to jack the heat up a little bit. This isn't quite working. So I've just had my first actual run of a bead and not, not, not even pretending I'm even quarter proud of it. But I actually got the rod to move and burn. Uh, you, you see I had a lot of false starts. It was such a fast feed. I had to feed that just So it gives me an idea of how they're gonna burn. <clears throat> All right, so we've reset and we've re-prepped. Um, it's gonna be a whole nother rod. Okay, so I'm failing miserably, but this was not to be unexpected. Uh, the same as when we're doing the brazing, preheating can help. So we're gonna give it a good go of a preheat here. Um, I don't know what to preheat it to, but we're just gonna heat her up and see what happens. So that went really well, a lot easier than normal. Uh, I don't know what, it <laughs> could have been extra preheating or extra cleaning or I'm not sure, but we'll check slag off and have a look. That actually doesn't look too half bad. Still nothing to write home about, but I'll accept that, that's pretty good. What I am my, that was my fifth rod, so running out. <laughs> it's a weird uh, slag pull you get, it looks quite, you know, it's not, it's not the same as I missed it with the, the old steel. Now the big fat thick boy. The trouble is there's so much slag and all the stuff flying around way more than normal. You sort of think you're not really burning much through, but really, actually even quite a bit behind. I'm having trouble getting it started. So I'm just gonna try to give it more heat, see if that's what's happening. 
As soon as you mess up and lose any bit of flux off the end of it, it becomes extremely hard to get started. I mean, a good percentage of that's going to be my skill level, but it's also it's really tricky. It's it's a lot harder than normal, I tell you. See, just when I thought I was uh, picking, getting the hang of it, my quality's actually gone down. I'm guessing a rod oven wouldn't be too bad of an idea for these rods as well, but I don't have one. Inconsistent at best. It's really hard to control speed with these, but uh, I'll go again. So I can make little slugs, but I'm not getting, not getting what I want out of it. See if we can. Here we have it. The last rod out the pack. Yeah, let's see how she goes. Alright, here goes nothing. The few things I learned about these in my 10 rods that I burnt was they like to do the Harold Holt and just disappear on you straight away. Just They suck away like they're gone. They just melt into oblivion. Uh, choosing, choosing my angle was very hard and very hard for me to keep consistent because it, it will definitely be an experience thing. They just don't seem to burn the same. They seem to just start getting real hot and real cold or just disappear on you. You think you're moving too fast, you think you're moving too slow. Like. This thickness here that I got with these, that was my best go, and I was trying to, I was trying to speed it up, but you felt like there was no slag behind you. It was hard to see a puddle. It was hard to like, you know, watch it all happen and form. Again, I'm not a pro welder. I definitely am not a pro welder. If you are a pro welder, you shouldn't be watching me. Anyway, there's way better stuff out there for you to be watching. Uh, the few things I learned: make it easier for yourself if you're going to have a go at this. Scratch start. Do not try and tap start or anything like that. Scratch start. As tempting as it is with these to break this off and get, get going through the flux, you can't tap start. You have to scratch start. That is, just has to be done. Second thing is weld prep, weld prep, weld prep. Something I learned from the aluminium brazing. You just, you have to prep like hell. You can't mess around. You have to prep away. Another thing I learned was preheating. You need to preheat this. This is still warm to touch now. I ended up leaving this big thick plate on the bottom. It clamped the plate because the aluminium was dispersing the heat really quickly. So by the time I heated up this big block, it held up enough heat to keep it sort of pre preheated. And then when I wanted to heat it up myself, it was already up a higher than ambient room temperature level, you know? So preheating didn't take four hours again. But once I started preheating it, I was actually start able to scratch that arc and just start running it down. I'm not claiming these to be good, by the way. I'm just saying it's a way better result than I started off. Would I recommend these to anyone else that had some aluminium welding to do? No, especially if you've got one of those sitting right over there. If, you're, if you've already got a MIG, there's no point even messing with this stick. This is never supposed to be a how-to video. I've never done this before, therefore I couldn't tell you how to do it. I was, originally someone said, hey, do you know you can stick out aluminium? I said, no, you can't. They said, yes, you can actually. I've never done it, but I met someone once who told me you can, and I said, really? Looked it up, found some rods, bought them, skipped forward, finally got around, got some time in the shop, haven't been away as much. So I'd have a go, and this is what we came up with. So, three things I found incredibly difficult with doing this. Controlling, controlling the rod. I could never work out what angle I wanted to be at, how hard I wanted to push, and how fast I wanted to move. Just all of the rod control. Normally I make small, fine adjustments as I'm running along. This, with the amount of slag, 
the amount of fumes, everything's coming away. I mean, this is one of the messiest stick weld things I've ever done before. It just got too full on. I lost track of myself and I couldn't see what was happening. So that's one thing I did struggle with was just keeping on top of my rod control. The second thing I found extremely hard was working out exactly how hot to have this thing. At the start, before I was preheating, I ended up having the amps through the roof. That wasn't working. I finished off, this was around 80, 80 amps, I think these were, roughly. You can't trust my welder too much, but roughly 80 amps, which is quite a lot higher than I would normally have the same size rod doing mild steel. So I don't know if I still had it up too hot, could have been cooler. The, the more I uh, preheated, the better I was off at a lower heat. Now, preheating. If you do not preheat, you will have a world of hurt. That is one thing you have to do is preheat. Preheat your materials. I learnt this uh, doing the brazing, and then I started off this, and I learnt the exact same problem again. So from now on, if it comes to experimenting with Ali, I'm always going to preheat it. So normally when I start with something like this, might not be the right way, might be the wrong way, but this is how I start. I'll just smash into it, break the edge off, the arc will start, and then I'll run my weld. With these things, you have to start on there lightly, scratch it, then your arc starts, because once that arc starts, you're moving fast now, and you've just gotta lay it in. Again, this might be terrible advice, because I'm not a pro welder, but this is what I found using 10 rods, and only 10 rods. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's starting to piss down the rain, so I'm not gonna be able to record too much audio out here. I might have to do some dubbing over inside. But, it was fun. I really enjoyed doing this. I really enjoyed having a go. Again, the three takeaways would be preheat, 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 clean, 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 and just speeds. You just gotta be on top of them speeds. I wasn't, I struggled with it. 